Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 8-5, Quadrilaterals. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and this is my third time to film this MathCast tonight, so I hope this time is a charm. Our quote tonight is Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote. He said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And this may not have anything to do with math, but I love this quote. Um, you know, there are people who sponsor orphans in Africa. I think that's so fabulous. There are people who work in food kitchens. I think that's awesome. There are people who help out in animal shelters. I think that is so cool. All of those things are great things that you can do with the support of your parents, but there are lots of things you can do without the support of your parents. Things like helping your peers in class to understand a math concept. That can make a big difference in their math understanding for the rest of their education. Um, being kind to someone who doesn't have a friend, being helpful to somebody who just needs a little bit of help. That might be your teacher, that might be your friends, that might be just a classmate, that might be your parents. And I have kids. I know it makes a huge difference when my kids do something special to help me out. So um, just think about that. What are you doing for others? It makes us good to be able to do things for other people. Our learning goal tonight is to identify and classify quadrilaterals. Here is our individual lesson learning goal. We are going to learn to classify, classify quadrilaterals tonight. And you also need to know that the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle are 360 degrees. So um, just like a triangle, the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle was 180. You multiply that times two and you get 360 degrees and you get a quadrilateral. Here's our vocabulary. You have this in your flip journal already glued in, except you have pictures to help you understand each particular vocabulary term in each polygon. Um, remember, a quadrilateral is that overall term for a polygon with four sides. A parallelogram sides, the word parallel means two lines that run next to each other an equal distance apart and never cross. So this wouldn't be a parallel line because they eventually cross, but this would be a parallel line, whether it runs this way or whether it runs this way. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel and equal in length. So these two sides are equal in length and parallel, and these two sides are equal in length and parallel. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. We also say with four 90 degree angles. It's the same thing as a right angle. Um, a rhombus is a parallelogram where all the sides are the same length, but it doesn't necessarily have 90 degree angles. It could, but it doesn't have to have. It has to have all sides the same length to be a rhombus. It has to have four right angles and parallel lines to be a rectangle. So um, think about that. We're going to be looking at that in a hierarchy diagram that I think will help you understand that a little bit better. A square is a rhombus and a rectangle. It is a rectangle with all sides the same length. And a trapezoid is what we call a special quadrilateral or a, um, because it only has one pair of parallel sides. And that would be either these two sides or these two sides. And the sides are not the same length necessarily. So um, just think about that as you're thinking about a trapezoid. Here's a hierarchy diagram. You need to be able to draw this or create this. You'll need to be able to do it for a test on our common unit assessment. Um, it is a learning target in the Common Core Standards, so it is very important that you know how to do this. So you need to draw this out in your flip journal. You need to label the different shapes, and it may help you if you have a ruler. If not, I'm okay if you freehand those shapes as long as you've got nice sharp corners and straight lines. Straight-ish lines, I should say. I know when I draw my bamboo tablet, my lines are not always perfectly straight. We have two different types of quadrilaterals at the top. You either have a parallelogram or you have a trapezoid. Remember, parallelograms, a parallelogram has to have opposite sides parallel. And um, those opposite sides are always the same length, too. In a trapezoid, you only have one set of opposing lines that are parallel. So um, you can see that in that shape. And these two are not parallel because they would eventually cross. Underneath a parallelogram, there are rectangles and rhombi. Rhombi is the plural for rhombus. So a rectangle, remember, it's kind of like we've got a family tree here. Our parallelogram is our grandparents. 
our rectangle and rhombus are the like our parents and the square is the children or the child of the rectangle and the rhombus. So the rectangle, it has opposite sides are parallel. It's still a parallelogram. And all four angles have to be 90 degrees. Um, in a rhombus, you still have um, opposite sides are parallel just because it's a parallelogram, but it doesn't have to have 90 degree angles. It can, but it doesn't have to. The important thing in a rhombus is that all four sides have the exact same length. That is the critical definition for a rhombus, which is why a square is kind of a child of both of them. It takes a characteristic from a rectangle and it takes the characteristics from a rhombus. It's a parallelogram, opposing sides are parallel, and it's a rectangle because it has 90 degree angles in all four angles, and it's a rhombus because all sides are the same length. So I think that's just kind of a fun way of looking at a hierarchy diagram, kind of picturing it as a family tree. Don't forget that kind of crazy uncle out to the side that's the trapezoid. But, um, but really make sure you practice this and practice creating it over and over and over so that you can fill these in on your test. Here are some practice problems we're going to do. You can go back and use your hierarchy diagram or your vocabulary terms to answer these questions. Number one, which quadrilateral is not a parallelogram? Pause it and push play when you've written the name of the polygon. Did you write trapezoid? Remember, that was the kind of the crazy uncle over to the side that was not a parallelogram. Number two, how are a rhombus and square alike? Pause it and push play when you've written it in. Use a complete sentence. A rhombus and square are alike, are alike because they blah, blah, blah. Push play when you've filled in your blah, blah, blah. Did you write both have equal sides? Remember, all four sides on a rhombus and a square have the exact same length. Number three is true or false. A trapezoid always has two sets of equal length sides. True or false? Pause it and push play when you've written it down. Did you write false? That's kind of what we talked about in number one. Number four. A square can also be called a blank or a blank. Go ahead and fill that in when you're ready. Did you write rhombus and rectangle? or rectangle and rhombus. Either way, you need to have both of those terms listed. Let's keep going. There's Martin Luther King talking on an old-timey telephone. It's not really that old-timey. That's the kind of phone I talked on when I was a kid. Number five, if a quadrilateral has three angles with the measures 65 degrees, 33 degrees, and 145 degrees, what is the measure of its fourth angle? This is similar to the way we found the missing angles of a triangle. So use that same strategy and pause it, figure it out, and push play when you're ready. Did you write 117 degrees? You could have added 65 plus 33 and 145 and then subtracted them all from the total sum of all the measures of the angles in a quadrilateral, which is 360 degrees. Or you could have taken 360 degrees and subtracted 65 from that, gotten your answer and subtracted 33 from that, gotten your answer and subtracted 145 from that. That would give you 117 degrees just like the first strategy would. Remember, there's more than one way to get to Phoenix and there's more than one way to solve a problem in math. It's time to challenge yourself. Don't stop the DVD because you need to challenge yourself. All of you need to do this. Everyone does the challenge tonight. You're going to create a Venn diagram using all of the vocabulary terms that you used in your hierarchy diagram. Now the difference is a hierarchy diagram looks more like a family tree with lines draw pointing to the different shapes that go underneath it. A Venn diagram is where you use circles and you may have overlapping circles and surrounding circles and that's all I'm going to tell you. So see if you can figure out how to organize all of that in a Venn diagram. 
Then come back tomorrow and we'll go over it in class. Finishing up, if you are at a level one in your learning, you're really struggling with these terms, then you need to come in and tell me that and we need to get you some flashcards to practice with. Um, we can make that set in class tomorrow. If you're at a two, you may want to make flashcards or you may just need to review these lessons again and study off of your flip journal notes. If you're at a three, you've pretty much got it and I hope that's reflected in your mastery check tomorrow. Write down any questions you still have you have completed Lesson 8-5 Quadrilaterals. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.